Hey guys, welcome to Dr. Nora's Clinic. In today's episode, I'm gonna be talking to you all about the Wahoon virus. As a general practitioner, I'm on the front line of any coughs, colds, and even weird and wonderful viruses such as the Wahoon virus. Now, today in Australia, we received our first confirmed case in Melbourne, Victoria, of the Wahoon virus. Naturally, this has caused a lot of angst and anxiety to a lot of people, including people who are just normal citizens of Australia and also doctors as well and healthcare professionals. So naturally, as a general practitioner, seeing about 50 patients a day, I have also got a little bit concerned myself because obviously I want to protect myself to protect you guys from transmitting any of these viruses. Now, the way that I heard this confirmed case was actually at work today. I was literally going to collect my next patient and I overheard it on the television and I could see it said, breaking news, Australia confirms its first case of the Wuhan virus. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is actually quite serious. It's getting a bit too close to home now. So as I saw my patient and I finished all of my day, I thought to myself, that's it. I've got to go and get myself protected. Now, what they have said is that you can get a P2 mask or an N95 mask, which may actually prevent the transmission of the virus from one person to another because it's thought that the virus is actually an airborne virus which means that you can catch it through coughing or sneezing and so on. So after work I headed down to my local hardware shop which is called Bunnings over here in Australia and luckily for me it was about 10 minutes before the shop closed because I looked online and actually luckily for me it said yes in stock we've got in stocks. So I thought awesome that's it I'm going. I literally had 10 minutes before the shop closed and I got there and I ran in and I was greeted by the masks at the front desk and I was like yes that's it they're there and this lovely lady who worked in Bunnings she said to me um, are you looking for a P2 mask? I was like yes I am. She's like, I'm really sorry, we don't have them in stock anymore, but all we have in stock are these. <sighs> and what were they? It was this. So this is all they had in Bunnings. Just look at that. <laughs> How am I supposed to treat my patients in this? It's like Darth Vader. <laughs> okay, Dr. Nora, we'll see you now. <sighs> that is right, it is this, this Darth Vader-esque type mask. I thought to myself, Okay, this is interesting. So I looked at her and I looked at the mask and I looked at her and I looked at the mask. I thought to myself, okay, um, can I actually talk out of this? Like, can people actually hear me? Because if you see over here, you can actually see the little white masks that go on the side of the actual main mask as well. And she kind of looked at me, she said, I'm not sure if you can talk out of it, but it will protect you. And I thought to myself, well, you know, if this is what I need to do to protect myself and to protect my patients, then this is what I have to do. I've just, I've just got to buy it. And I did say to her, like, are there any other shops that have got the P2 mask I can drive to? And she said, no, all of the Bunning shops are out of stock. And over here in Australia, Monday is a public holiday. So she, we're not going to get any more stock until next week. And I just thought to myself, my God, this is crazy. What's going on? And she told me that all of the, everyone's coming in to buy the P2 mask, not only for themselves, but also to send it abroad to the cities that are affected. And I just thought to myself, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna buy this and you know, so be it. I'm just gonna have to look funny for a day. So if my patients see me wearing this funny mask, they know it's for a good cause. So as I left Bunnings, I was in my car and I thought to myself, well, maybe somewhere else will have the mask. Maybe I can call up a chemist, a 24 hour chemist or a late night chemist. So no joke, I called up about 20 different pharmacies and uh, along the coast, along the Gold Coast and also all the way up to Brisbane, which is about an hour's drive away from where I am at the moment. And every single person that I spoke to said, no, I'm sorry, we're out of stock. No, I'm sorry, we're out of stock. And there was nothing. They literally said they, they, were just, they were just all out. And the reason being is recently in Australia, you may have heard of the big bushfires that we had. So a lot of people were buying the P2 masks for the smoke. And so now we've got this Wahoon virus that's coming on. So a lot of people are now buying it for that purpose. So literally the whole of Australia is pretty much out of these P2 masks. And I just read it on the news that one of the states is trying to order in a million P2 masks just to replenish the stores from the Wahoon virus, but also from the bushfire crisis as well. So you can imagine the people are kind of getting a bit frantic and a bit anxious about this. So I had this kind of brainwave. We actually drove past the hospital and I thought to myself, well, I can go to the hospital, the hospital, the local hospital, they will probably have some masks there. Whew, so the search is over. I have just picked up some N95 P2 masks and I am so relieved. I went, I came up with this miraculous idea of going to my colleagues in the hospital. So I went over to the ED department and I said, excuse me, my name's Dr. Nora. I'm a GP from Southport. Um, I work in Chinatown. Is it possible to use some of your masks? And they're like, yeah, of course, sure. I was like, oh my God, thank God. I have literally called the whole of the Gold Coast, Brisbane, Queensland, trying to find these masks and everyone's been sold out. And they're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, we've seen a couple of cases, we've seen, a, we've had a couple of suspected cases, but nothing's been confirmed. I was like, oh, okay, cool. All right, guys, you keep up the good work. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and then I left and he, the guy was so nice. I think he must have been the consultant in charge, but he gave me a couple for my staff as well. So we can all be protected. These are the medical quality ones, the high grade ones, so that if there are any viruses, we are safe. 
Oh my God, it just reminds me of this time when I used to work in the NHS and I had to see this patient who was suspected with Ebola. And <laughs> I walked onto the ward and I went on and I wore obviously my, my kind of your hazmat, which is your, your gloves, your apron and so on. But like when you're younger, you don't realize the gravity of these viruses. So I went in going, oh yeah, cool, cool, cool. You know, do your medical stuff and check up. And only like five years onwards have I realized, I thought, oh my gosh, I literally put myself in danger there. I could have got Ebola from this person. Thank God I didn't obviously. And in the end, they never turned out to be Ebola. But you know, you just think as a, as a medical professional, we put ourselves in some crazy situations. We put ourselves at risk. We put our families at risk as well. We put all of our loved ones at risk. So. You have to be so careful and so I am so pleased that I've got my hands on these P2 masks because it sounds like they are elusive. Everyone seems to be going in a mad panic trying to get them. They do hopefully, well we think that they do hopefully stop the transmission of the virus. However, you do have to wear them, you know, well, you have to wear them around your face and cover the whole of your mouth and your nose um, and they are disposable so you throw them away after, after using them. So I am relieved that I have got my hands on P2 masks for myself and my stuff because unfortunately, even though we work in Chinatown, we actually don't have these at all <laughs> because we don't deal with um, viruses and we don't have bushfires where we work. So it's great to have spares as well just for the future. Um, but we should probably order, we probably should order these in uh, in the future anyway. And as I got home just now, I actually did hear that there have been three more confirmed cases in New South Wales, which is a different state to where I'm staying at the moment, which is Queensland. But still, it does show that the virus is, albeit very low numbers, it is progressing and there is some spread of the disease. So what does the Wuhan virus mean for you? Well, just to give you a bit of a background, Wuhan is a city in China. We don't quite know how the virus came about. We think that it might have been transmitted from mammals and we think that there may be some transmission between human to humans through sneezing or through coughing. As you can see, there's a lot of uncertainties because we're still kind of working out what's going on. But what we do know is that some people have died in China as a result of the virus. Now it is thought that these people who have died have been unwell um, as a background they've also they've been unwell and they've just got the virus on top the virus itself causes pneumonia type symptoms which means that they may have symptoms of a chest infection which could include fever difficulty breathing and coughing as well we do know that the Wuhan virus has an incubation period for about 14 days which means that you may not immediately have symptoms if you've contracted the virus but it might present later on down the line by about two weeks now currently Australia have banned all flights from Wuhan coming into Australia the last flight was last Thursday but again, there is that incubation period of two weeks, so we have to keep our wits about us. It is important that if you yourself have recently traveled from Wuhan or from China and are experiencing symptoms of fever, cough, difficulty breathing, then you must, must, must keep yourself isolated, which means keep yourself locked in a room, wearing one of these and transfer yourself to the emergency department, making sure that you do not infect anybody else. As soon as you arrive to the emergency department, let them know that you have, you might have symptoms of the Wuhan virus. From then on in, they can put you in an isolated room. They can take protective measures to protect themselves and to protect others around you. It is important that you don't rock up to a general practice, sit in a waiting room without any protection on and you're coughing away and you're splurting away and you think you might have the Wuhan virus because obviously that is gonna cause an increased risk to those around you and also the staff members as well well so it's super important if you think you have got these symptoms please invest in one of these masks p2 mask present yourself to ed where you can go into an isolation bay and from then on in they can do pretty good quick turnaround times for testing so i think the current turnaround time is about 24 hours and they will look after you and give you the right treatment so nothing really to panic about just at the moment. We don't know exactly what the extent of this is going to be. I have read that also that they're trying to work on an, a vaccination as well for the Wuhan virus. But the most important thing is if you yourself have traveled from Wuhan or from travel from China or know somebody who is who has recently traveled from China or Wuhan and you're in direct contact with them and you're suffering with symptoms of shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, a cough or fever, please, please, please keep yourself isolated. Pop a P2 mask on, seek medical help do not sit in a waiting room or do not sit any public areas where you could be coughing without any mask protection um, so that we don't transfer this on to other people creating an epidemic or a pandemic now um, so please keep your wits about you in general as well also for those of you who might just be worried you're on public transport make sure you wash your hands thoroughly make sure that you're not get around anybody who might have a cough and just just keep your wits about you I mean there's no harm in wearing a p2 mask it's not going to cause you any issues um, but it will certainly help to hopefully avoid any transmission and then stop this propagation of the virus that is ongoing. 
So far, Queen's Anne has not had any confirmed cases touch wood. There were two people who were tested over the last couple of days, but they have not been confirmed just yet. So with your help, we can hopefully stop the transmission of this virus. Please keep your wits about you. P2 masks are available. There will be more in stock coming in the next couple of days. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. And I hope to see you again in the next video after I've survived my shift tomorrow. Wish me luck. Take care and stay healthy.